Okay, good morning everybody, it's Mike, and thanks for jumping on here with me this morning as we continue our countdown of the 10 biggest mistakes that I've seen agents make in my career. We started it off with counting down from number 10, which was just having goals that, lacking goals that are meaningful to them. Number nine, lacking a system of accountability. Uh, it's so important. Number eight came in with having a part-time schedule but having full-time expectations. That just leads to frustration. Number seven, not setting personal standards high enough. Mm, we could spend a whole day on that. Number six, failure to invest in themselves. And number five that we've covered already, being overly self-focused, making everything all about us instead of shining the spotlight on other people. <clears throat> so I'm going to pick up today with our fourth, coming in at number four on our 10 biggest mistakes that agents make. <clears throat> Trying to work from home. Uh, I see so many people trying to do this. And, and it's not that you can't. I mean, theoretically, there's nothing that you can't do from home that you have to go to an office to do. It's not that you can't. We just don't, right? There's just too many distractions. It's way too comfortable. Oh, we need the synergy. We need the focus. We need the resources around us. And I guess I'll take this off my list if anybody ever can show me one single highly productive agent that's working from home. So far, nobody's been able to do it. I've never observed it. <clears throat> Number three on our list of 10 biggest mistakes that agents make, being uncoachable. Hmm, being uncoachable, yeah. Hey, everybody wants good ideas around them. Everybody wants tips and suggestions. Everybody wants good coaching. They're just most of the time uncoachable. Right. What they're really looking for is not good coaching. They're looking for the secrets, maybe the workarounds, like this is how I want to do it. And if you say, well, you, you know, you can't do it that way. It won't work. No, 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 no. Now I don't want to, I don't want any more of your coaching anymore. I just want coaching that supports my fantasy of how I want this all to work. And you go, you know, my answer to that is, well, the old saying is some things are true whether you choose to believe them or not. Um, I see lots of people that want good coaching. I just think that most of them are uncoachable, right? They won't implement. They won't take action. They're just like, yeah, 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 but those are hard and I'm looking for easy. Okay. Okay. Being uncoachable is a pretty big problem. So in my office, in my coaching program, I have two seating areas. One for the coachable, agents that I think actually are trying to get better. Don't mind uh, a vetting process, a little challenge, uh, challenge to assumptions. Um, and then the other area is, that's just where we'll talk about what's going on in the world because they don't really want any tips or suggestions. They just kind of want to socialize for a while. That's fine. I'll do that. Uh, but let's don't call it coaching. Okay. Number four, trying to work from home. Gosh, if that's you, how's that working for you? And you know, the old definition of crazy is continuing to do the same things over and over again and expecting different results, right? That's crazy. If it's not working for you, then maybe the way you're doing it doesn't work. And number three, being uncoachable. I think we've covered that. I'm really hoping you'll dial in tomorrow. We're going to get to number two and then number one, the number one biggest mistake I see agents making in this business. For now, let's just get out there and make it happen for ourselves.